Hey folks, good to see you. I'm David and I've got an apology to make. Over 40 videos in and there's a really simple terrain piece that I have not shown you guys how to make yet. So, let's get our feet wet with some water features. So the last video I made, I was busy staging some miniatures for a photo to go with the video and I suddenly realised that I had some water based robots and I didn't have any water features to go with my atomic wasteland scenery. So in the course of an evening I quickly knocked this up and as I was doing it I thought hang on a minute, this is so simple and I haven't shown you how to do it. So we'll get on with something like this. Now, I'm going to show you two methods of making water features. One is definitely kid friendly, they can do it by themselves with no problem whatsoever. The other one, they may need a little bit of help from an adult because there are things like spray paints involved. But you can mix and match the techniques and construction from both and the colours and things like that. Mix and match them so that it suits your particular battlefield. So we'll start off with the kids one first. This is just some reclaimed packaging, a pair of earbuds were in here, but the good thing about it is it's got a glossy finish, it's clear, we want that, and there is a nice flat area that we can make some flat terrain out of. So, I'll just use some scissors to start reclaiming this, get the edges off. Now, a quick reminder on this channel, we don't necessarily go for ultra detail in the model, we're not looking for a museum finish. At the end of the day, your armies on the battlefield are the heroes, and any terrain that you have set up is essentially there just to frame them. So, as long as we can give the impression that something is there, that should be good enough, and we let the viewer's mind fill in the rest of the blanks. When we're talking about water, the one thing about a liquid in nature is the fact that unlike pretty much everything else, it's glossy. So we're going to use gloss to give the effect of water. Now, again, just using the scissors, we're going to cut it into sort of like an oval shape because this is going to be a small pond. Right, one pond cut out. Now the next thing I have is some prints of just water. For our pond, I think, I think I'm going to go with the darker colour. So, I'm just going to lay that on there. And quickly draw around like that. We're going to... Now it's important that you mark it out at this stage because we're not applying this until the very end so you need all your sizing done first and just in preparation I'm going to cut this out but I am not going to go to the very edges of the mark I'm going to come in slightly and cut inside the line so that that pond is going to be smaller than the gloss piece that's on top but not by much you only want it a little bit inside the line just size that up and make sure that it is yeah that's exactly what I was after okay so just a little bit over all around the edges brilliant now checking back on the model I showed you earlier you can see that some of the banks I have a little bit of raised feature there just to make it uneven look it a little bit more natural because it's not going to be completely uniform and to do that all I've got is some really scrap polystyrene and we're just going to dot a little bit around the banks just to build up some areas now you don't need a huge amount and this is the you know rubbishy packaging polystyrene and you only need it sort of a couple of bubbles high in order to make it a little bit uneven so break some off like that or you could even use small stones no problem with that and dab a PVA and don't take it all the way to the edge you want to in a little bit because there's still going to be some texture 
Oops. That's the bad thing about polystyrene. One breath and it goes everywhere. There's still going to be other material going on the other side, so you don't want it all the way to the edge. And that can be sent aside to dry for a little while, and we'll get on with the adult version. Okay, the adult version. This stuff is sheet acrylic, two mil thick. I got a big sheet of it and it didn't cost that much for another project that unfortunately didn't work. So I am going to be using this for terrain bases. I do like using this stuff, it is pretty rigid. Because it's non-porous it doesn't warp, which is really good. The other stuff that I use is MDF and depending on the size of the piece, that can start causing a few problems when it starts absorbing moisture. This stuff can't, and the good thing about it is it's already got a gloss coat on it, which is going to help us. Now, this particular piece is going to be more man-made. It's going to be an edge piece, so it's going to sit against the edge of the board like that, and we're going to build up around it so that it's a man-made sort of inlet, like a dock or something like that. So, let us get it to size. Now, I'm going to put sort of like flagstones around the end of it so I want the length of them to be 25 mil now I want it across the edge so that is going to give us a mark about there and there now you can't cut all the way through it but it is pretty easy to work with let's just get a nice deep score run it a couple of times and now that it's scored you can just get a pair of pliers and basically it'll just start snapping like that okay all right that's to the right width and i'm not too worried about the length of it because i'll just cut the flagstones to tile at the very end just to show you how easy it is to work with this one was done the same and as you can see i've done curves on that all it was just make your score line curved and then you snap it off using the pliers exactly the same so that is actually now ready for a paint job let's check back in on the kids model and see how we're getting one with that okay all those pieces of polystyrene have dried in place, which is good. And I put a little bit of paper down because it's the messy bit. So right out to the edges and covering completely that polystyrene, we're just going to get a run of PVA around the edges. Make sure you get right into any underhangs. And this is going to form the bank. And you don't have to be too neat because nature, and especially stuff around water, is not all that neat. If you do go over at all, then it's just going to be sort of a shallower spot in the water. But you can see I'm not brushing it on, it's more a sort of dab, because I do want a reasonable thickness of PVA there, so that it will adhere to the ground cover. One thing to just try and make sure, which I almost made the mistake of, <laughs> move your paper around if you're working on it, rather than the miniature, because as you can see there's some excess glue there, and I don't actually want that on the underside, because we want this to be completely see-through. Thankfully, I caught that in time and I haven't messed it up. All right, now that the glue is on, this is just builder sand. Sand with a few larger pebbles in and we give that a good coat, making sure we really do cover those upraised pieces of polystyrene. If there are any th bits that you've missed, you can always go back and do it again. But that can now dry for a second time. Two kinds of spray, one is a dark green, one is a lighter blue. This works, they are both um, auto colours and gloss because that gloss sheen is what is going to give us the effect of water. Now this works best with a primary and the secondary colour next to it, so a blue and green is good. Uh, yellow and orange if you want to do a chemical pool, that's also good just got to remember that your first base coat is going to be your darker colour so in this case it's going to be the green for me and we're doing them straight one after the other because we want the colours to blend slightly so let's try and it's 
it's not caught brilliantly because we are in the middle of winter. Got a little bit of a ripple effect, that's okay. Alright, and then straight onto the blue now I'm going to over spray it around the edges. I'm just going to catch it with the edge. spray mist because we want it to look as if the darker colour is deeper. And of course I'm leaving one edge completely dark because that is the edge that is sort of open to the end of the board. All right I'll get this inside to dry. Okay so the piece is nicely dried and the bank ground cover is uh, is nicely stuck to it. Now there are a few things where you need to be just a little bit careful on this piece while you are sort of in the middle stages. Now what we are doing is making sure that that clear plastic coating doesn't get scratched in any way shape or form. So at this stage because we've had ground cover tipped all over it I'm just using a brush and I'm making sure that any gritty bits are brushed away from it just so that when I'm handling it later on I'm not sort of gouging them through the surface and spoiling that sheen. Second thing is to make sure I'm now onto a clean piece of paper for the next part because we don't want to be sitting on grit and scratching the back side of the surface. Now it's time for a paint mix. We're going to paint that ground cover something nice and uniform and for that I'm going to put in a little bit of tan paint, a little bit of brown paint just to darken it down and some grey paint just to desaturate the colours all mixed in so I've got a nice sort of earth bank colour. Because this clear plastic is part of the finished product we don't want to be painting on top of it so you need to be really neat and careful with your painting. Kids take your time and above all try not to accidentally bring your brush over the top like this because there's always the possibility that if you've got a little bit of excess paint on your brush you can manage to drip it on to that plastic and I'm just as neatly as I possibly can just following the edge and I'll get the edge closest to the water painted in first now that I've done the inside let's get that outside done and of course make sure that we get those big top pictures all around and we'll leave that to dry We'll get on with making some blocks for the outside of that pier system. Now you've seen me use one of these before. This is a fabric cutting wheel and I'm just going to neaten up this line here. And again, really the best thing to be using with one of these is a metal rule. I'm just going back and forward in little cutting movements. One, to make sure that I actually go through and two, because it does give a sort of a rougher cut because we don't want the uh, the blocks to be too regular. Now I'm going to make these blocks 25 mil wide the width of a base but I don't want them square so I'm going to make them 25 mil long 15 mil wide. So line that up with my mat there and then cut that strip. Now let's get these done into 25 mil blocks. Okay, paint dry on there. Let's just have a little bit of the tan and we'll just do a quick dry brush on the facing side. And again, try and be as careful as you can. And we're not too worried about the, um, the side, sort of like the outside edge. It's mainly the stuff closer to the plastic that we want to put that highlight on. That's got that. And then around that outside edge, let's have some glue. And remember that you are leaving a reasonable gap. Kind of do it halfway between the front edge and the back. 
Please excuse any noises you hear in the background. The cats have found a box. And again, because we're using glue, remember you're rotating the whole paper. Once you've got the glue on, it is time for the flocking. Whoops. Oh. Oh well, you want a decent coating and that's more than decent. Right, we will leave that to dry and bind. Right, that is now dry and as you can see, because of the angle I was spraying on, I managed to get the outside edge all done, but there is still white on those other edges where the stonework's going to go. So we'll just take the opportunity and do a quick line of grey paint just around those edges, just so that it's going to blend in with the stonework. All right, the edge paint is dry. Now it's time to get these blocks on. Because I'm using a foam rubber, I'm going to use a glue that is suitable for rubber. And we don't need a huge amount of it, just a thin line, because as we press it down, it will spread out. You could use super glue, but I'm avoiding that because if that spreads out too much, you're gonna get that sort of white oxidization on the paint and, and that's a fit, an effect we don't want. Now, I am working from the short end of the piece because that was the, area that I measured out in terms of the width for the stone blocks. So let's start getting them in place. Compress that down. Then I'll start working along the side. And of course if we had covered this edge over, basically we would have had a swimming pool. I'll leave this to dry and then find a little bit of dry brush for it. Well, that's had a good dry and the flocking is well adhered to it. So before we go any further, we'll just clean up that glossy area again. And this time we're going to make sure that there's nothing on the reverse side and just get everything off the work area because we're on to the very final stage. Let's bring back that piece of water. This is a simple school glue stick and we're going to use this because it does not have a liquid content. If we get liquid on paper, it goes all scrunchy and we want it nice and flat. We are just going to very, very carefully go around the edges. We don't want it going into the center and then just size it up, press flat at the edges and there we have one finished water feature. Wasn't that simple. Let's get back to the adult version. So now the glue's dried, very final thing is just a wee bit of a dry brush with light grey just to uh, bring out the highlights on these stones. And obviously on these facing edges, just take your time and just be nice and gentle when you're doing it because the last thing you want is to accidentally get anything on that water. There you go, one more completed water feature. So there you go, two new terrain pieces, one kid friendly, one more adult friendly, and of course an example of how you can mix and match the two techniques like I said earlier, using the basin colour from this one and the ground cover from this one to make it fit your own battlefield. It's been a pleasure having you here with me. If you want, please do hit the like and subscribe button, leave a comment down below. There's plenty more videos that are going to be coming up very shortly. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye now. The camera is still rolling, by the way. Yeah.